Good morning, everyone. Welcome to St. Bartholomew's Church. Whether you are nearby or far away, we are so blessed that we can gather together and be a church today, to be a faithful community gathered together to hear the word of God, to sing our praises, and to share a meal together, and to be God's holy people this day, whether we are near or far. So welcome to St. Bartholomew's Church. And I hope that in anticipation of a meal, you might have some bread nearby and a bit of wine or something else to drink, so that when we come to the time when we break bread together, we can literally do that as we share a meal together across the wonders of technology, but still bind us together to be God's holy people. So welcome. And now I invite us to stand, if you are able, wherever you are, if you want, and sing, Come, we, all of us, that love the Lord. <laughs> Now with energy and joy, Alleluia, Christ is risen, Christ is risen indeed, Alleluia.
God be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whom truly to know is everlasting life, grant us so perfectly to know your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may steadfastly follow his steps in the way that leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Acts. An angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go toward the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, how can I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb, silent before his shearer, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe this generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. Eunuch asked Philip, about who may I ask you, does the prophet say this? About himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. Then they came up out of the water. The Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. Here what the Spirit is saying to God's people. A reading from 1 John. 
Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and no God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. And this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in I, us, because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the father has sent his son as the savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the son of God and they abide in God. So we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love. And those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us, those who say, I love God and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or a sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this. Those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. We begin again. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit because apart from me, you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My father is glorified by this 
that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Now, in the name of God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Amen. <clears throat> Philip is one of seven Greek-speaking Jewish Christians assigned by the disciples in the early post-resurrection community to tend to the needs of others, especially widows, those most marginalized and vulnerable in society. Without husbands, they had no standing and no protection. Today, by whatever means, Philip finds an Ethiopian reading Isaiah this Ethiopian is a man of great status. He has a chariot. This Ethiopian is a man of great wealth. He owns a scroll. He controls the treasury of the queen of Ethiopia. Candace is Ethiopian for queen. And this man therefore has huge standing and protection. But he cannot understand what he is reading. So Philip and the Ethiopian have a conversation and Philip teaches him. And in teaching him, Philip bears witness to Jesus. The Ethiopian is clearly moved and actually convinced by Philip. So he turns to Philip and asks, is there anything to prevent me from being baptized? Well, there could have been lots of reasons, actually. He may or may not have been Jewish. He is a foreigner, but primarily he is a eunuch which based on Levitical law makes him an inferior person sexually. He is considered defective because he is unable to be fruitful and multiply literally. Philip, unmoved by obvious restrictions and restraints, joyfully grabs him, dunks him, and simply baptizes him. Hmm. Unable to be fruitful and multiply. Jesus says to his disciples, be fruitful and multiply. It is his last evening with his 11. Judas has already left. And Jesus says, be fruitful. Of course, he's not talking about creating progeny, as wonderful as that might be. Jesus is demanding something far more difficult and actually radical. Jesus says, bear fruit. Well, what fruit is he talking about? What does that mean for Jesus? It means a life of public works not just private, behind a closed door, but a life of public, visual, able to be seen works on behalf of the kingdom. 
Jesus is speaking about missionary activity, evangelism, sharing the good news, not just keeping that quiet and inside of us, but actually sharing the good news of what it is that we long to believe and understand and grasp. It means to care for the poor, the sick, prisoners, orphans, elderly, widows. In other words, to care for the least, the last, and the lost. And it calls on us to make a way for our faith to actually impact our society so that our values and our actions are in accord with God's desires for creation. So what fruit? Well, fruit that radically challenges a self-focused, exclusionary behaving world, which, by the way, I am sick, kind of sick of living in today. Jesus challenges his disciples to bear fruit, fruit that will radically challenge a self-focused and exclusionary behaving world. Maybe it's no different today. Throughout the ages, there have been moments when the church has actually borne fruit like when Paul baptized Gentiles who were not circumcised and took that risk. Like when Francis of Assisi shocked the church by living totally reliant on Jesus and therefore a property-less life. Like when Luther and other reformers cut ties to the church because it exercised excessive, unchecked, abusive authority. Like the Anabaptists who challenged the church to relinquish recourse to the sword and state-sponsored violence. And even like the Anglican church who agitated that slavery was incompatible with Christianity long before abolitionists in the United States like Philip, who doesn't hesitate, doesn't hesitate to baptize a eunuch, a total outcast by societal norms of his day. Moments of extraordinary fruit bearing. Of course, it's not easy to bear fruit, to lay aside our fears of not being compliant with the world. The world is pretty demanding and bearing fruit might put us at odds with what the world demands of us. It's sometimes scary and a little unnerving to stand up and to stand out for the things that God requires and asks and pleads with us to do. In other words, to be a bit different because really good people, that is what it really means to be a disciple, is to stand up and to stand out for God. Willing to not hesitate to do that, willing to not be bound by worldly restraints and restrictions or judgments or disagreements, willing to stand for something more challenging and more redemptive than anything the world can offer. Jesus calls on all of us, all of us, to stand up and to stand out and to bear fruit, sometimes monumental fruit and sometimes just a piece of a fruit, just something that we do to stand up and stand out for God. So how, how do we do that? <laughs> How, how do we do that? How do any of us find moments to be fruitful? How do any of us find the understanding, the vision, but mostly the courage to be fruitful? I don't think we don't understand what God asks of us. I think most of us do. I think most of us grasp the vision of what God wants for God's creation, what most of us lack is maybe some courage to figure out how to do that. Clearly, 
clearly in the world that still today needs such a powerful witness. So how, how do we do that? Well, Jesus says, stay close. Jesus knew the hardships ahead for his disciples. Jesus knew how hard it is to stand against the world while living in the world. Jesus knew how hard it would be to press the world toward the kingdom of God. Jesus knew how much none of us would want to bear that kind of fruit because to do so is frightening and can feel costly. Who might we offend? Who might turn away from us? Who might not appreciate what we're saying? But Jesus says, if you want to do it, if you really want to be my disciple, then stay close. Stay close to me. And he uses the image of a vine to help us understand that. In a vineyard, the best grapes are from the branches closest to the central vine because that is where the nutrients are the most concentrated. So gardeners prune branches to stay close and don't let them ramble all over the place, wandering here and there, farther and farther from the real vine where life and health reside. So Jesus says, Stay close to the real vine. Stop rambling and finding other things to worship. Bearing fruit doesn't create disciples. Bearing fruit reveals disciples. Let me say that again. Bearing fruit doesn't create disciples. Bearing fruit reveals our discipleship. And the key to bearing fruit is staying close and connected to the real vine, not wandering away. If we stay close to Jesus, then we can weather almost any hardship. Well, actually any hardship. Then we can find the courage to stand for the right and not just the easy. When Philip baptizes the eunuch, the scripture tells us that they both left with joy. Can you just imagine the, the smiles on their faces? And that's what comes from staying close to Jesus. There is a level of joy and delight that is beyond our imagination. We, we stay close to Jesus. We find the courage to be disciples and to do something amazing and joyous. When we stay close to Jesus, we might just enable someone else to be a disciple, to rejoice in the company of disciples, and to do things that are stunningly joyful. That's what comes from bearing fruit. And how do we do that? How do we stay close to Jesus? We do it because we know that God loves us. God loves us. That is how we know and understand profound love. While we love one another, God's love for us is so profound, it is so immense, it is so strong, that it is that love that draws us to Jesus, draws us to God, and keeps us wanting to be close and to stay close to our God. It is that love of God for us that gives us the desire to stay close, which then empowers us to stand up and to stand out. And by the grace of God, we have each other to do it with one another. Not something we have to do alone. We do it with one another because we are the church. We are the body of Christ. So on this day, celebrate God's love for you. Let it just cascade down on you. Help it draw you closer, closer to God, closer to Christ. And may you find in that closeness the power and the strength to stand up and to stand out for a world that desperately needs it, but also that we might collectively know what it means to smile broadly and to feel a profound sense of joy. Amen.
all of us to stand, if you are able, as we celebrate this God we can be close to and say together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally God of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten God of my faith, of one being with the Father. Prayers of the people are found in your service bulletin. Friends, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. So let us boldly pray to God. Great vine grower, remove anything in your church that hinders our love. May we abide in your son, Jesus. May he abide in us. We want to bear much fruit. We want to be disciples of your son, loving God. Put your words in our hearts. Ruler of the nations, under your reign, the poor shall eat and be satisfied. Make known your saving deeds to the ends of the earth, loving God. Put your words in our hearts. Creator God, you nourish our bodies and our spirits with the fruits of the vine. Give us eyes to see your presence in our world. Give us words to witness to your goodness. Remembering the 29th birthday of Emily Nicase and the 26th birthday of Laura Nicase, the birthday of David Rose, the wedding of Aaron Rosenberger and Megan Threet the 29th wedding anniversary of Brian and Sandra Rosenberger, the baptismal anniversary and 35th birthday of Brian Anthony Piccarello, and the baptismal anniversary and 33rd birthday of Jeffrey David Piccarello, the 21st birthday of Brianne Lynn McPhillips, and any others we name at this time. The 80th birthday of Ray Ziegler. The um, 85th birthday of Senator Dolores Kelly. And the 19th birthday Jack of, of, of Maya Marie Pulliam. The recovery of Celeste. The 13th birthday of Alan Wade Burnside. Loving God, put your words in our hearts. Good teacher, you sent Philip to the Ethiopians so that he would be transformed by understanding. Bless our local schools, colleges, and universities wherever they are. Give wisdom and understanding to all those who teach and all those who learn. Loving God. Put your words in our hearts. Oh God, you are love. You love us so much. 
we pray for our brothers and sisters, especially those in great need, remembering Lucy Marshall, Vince Marsiglia, Donna Cartwright, Janet Churchill, Shirley Nathan Pulliam, Wyveta Dupree, Lillian Thomas, Celia Vismile, Ray Ziegler, Larry Brown, Sandra De Silva, Young Sam, Michelle Haney Madison, Mary Warfield, Iadel House, Jim Wright, Kathleen DeVale, David McClellan, Dana Shevashevsky, Melody Pitts, Tim Wolf, James Graham, Kathy Brookman, Brad Schlegel, Margaret Chateau, Kate Henshaw, Ronnie Clark, Lee Smink, Jean Black, Celeste Thurston, 40 West Assistance and Referral Center clients, Hope Harbor partner families, those affected by the coronavirus, and any others we name at this time. My sister, her family, Mom and all my these brother, friends, my brother Lloyd and his family, her her Kern, Warren, Jake, and William, family of Betsy Taylor, Junior, Warren, her dad, Evan, West, Jamie, her Brian, and her family, Beverly, Deborah, Elaine McClellan, my sister Valerie Nathan Pulliam, Valerie Nathan. Increase our love for them. Teach us empathy. Bless them with your healing touch. Loving God. <laughs> Almighty God, who truly to know is everlasting life. May your love be an eternal abode for all who have died. Remembering William Mark Goodwin Jr., Art Henschel, and any others we name at this time. James and Henry Adam Morton. Oh, Lucy Allen. Edward Morton. Bruce Gage. Leon. Carolyn Lawrence. Yeager. Barbara Barrett, G. Taylor. Barrett. And Horace Leighton. And Mike Woodson. John Taylor. Loving God. Show your goodness, O Lord, and hear our prayers. Look past our selfish desires and remember your own faithfulness. In your great compassion, consider our petitions, and in your mercy, do in our lives that which is truly good. We pray in the name of your Son, who with you and the Holy Spirit reigns one God now and forever. Amen. And now my sisters and my brothers, the peace of Christ be always with you. Also with you. We are God's peace. Peace, 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 pe
What a joy to have you all here today, whether you are near or far, we have this extraordinary ability to create community together. So I'd like to just mention some things for us to consider. The first thing, of course, is in your bulletin is the what's happening at St. B's. I always hope that you'll take a peek at that and, um, and have a chance to sort of look over all the things that are happening here at St. Bartholomew's. And it's for all ages, from smaller and younger to those of us who are older. There's always wonderful things to be involved in here at St. B's. And so I hope that you'll take advantage of that because it really doesn't much matter where you are. You can join us through Zoom. So I hope that that will find something to perk your interest. I do want to mention just a couple of things that I want to bring to your attention. The first one is our Bach at St. B's series. This is just a wonderful offering that Ted does every single year for us at St. B's. And this year, it's just delightful. Um, and the wonderful thing is that you can, you can join in no matter where you are. Um, the music is just light and joyous and fun. You get a chance to see Ted's extraordinarily beautiful instrument. It's just a gorgeous harpsichord but then it's also just a chance to let your spirits be revived. There's one on this evening. There are three more, one this evening. So I hope that you will join in. And the gift of that also is, is that you can go back and find it and hear it another time even and just celebrate the wonderful gift of our musician who brings us these wonderful opportunities. I also want to mention that on May 7 through 9, it is the May Ceasefire Weekend. Thanks to the efforts of Bridget Maloney, our parish has been actively involved in the ceasefire movement here in Baltimore. And so in our own neighborhood this next weekend, there will be some events to try to bring up and out of us our better nature so that we might find a way to put away the violence and particularly the guns. And even if you're not here in Baltimore, I hope that on that weekend, you will find some way in your own place, wherever you live, if it's just to stand outside in solidarity with ceasefire weekends, no matter where they're happening, and to just pray, pray for the gift of some peace and some resolution to our gun violence. Next Sunday at Faith Forum, we will be exploring Native American spirituality. I wanna just quickly share a couple of stories with you. As you might remember, we offer an opportunity for our youth to take spiritual pilgrimages when we can. We have been to Navajo land three times, and we've been to British Columbia one time to study First Nation people and their extraordinary depth and breadth of spirituality. It is really quite stunning. So I wanna share two stories with you. One, when we were in Navajo land, we decided that we wanted to take a tour through this amazing um, area that is very flat and desert-like. And out of this flat desert pops up these huge red rock um, formations. And so we showed up, we had a wonderfully gregarious uh, Navajo man as our guide. And he started pointing out and he said, well, we call that one John Ford, or we call that one John Wayne, because he reminded us, of course, of the old movies where you see the stagecoach going across the desert. We kept trying to say to him who we were and that we were here for a spiritual pilgrimage. And finally, we drove back in and he stopped and he said, follow me. And so we all climbed out and followed him. We walked around this ledge and there in front of us was this vast expanse of desert with these huge red rocks. And he said, be seated. And we were. And he said, we call that. And he gave us the Navajo name and explained what it was. And then he did another one and another one. And he pulled out a recorder and played some wonderful music. I don't think I've ever seen our kids as quiet and as overwhelmed and struck by the level of care and thoughtfulness of this person. And then one other story, just to add a bit of light note to it. We went to an Episcopal church on Navajo property in the reservation, and the priest there was very nice, asked me if I would like to vest for the occasion. I said, I'd love to. And so we would ramble along in English, and every once in a while, an older Navajo woman would stand up and speak in Navajo. And after the service was over, I said, is she interpreting the service into Navajo? And he says, I have no idea what she's saying. <laughs> so 
So there was always some humor involved as well, but this coming Sunday, we will have the joy of, of having a chance to really experience and to understand maybe at a different level the kind of spirituality that our First Nation people offer us in this great land. And then two other quick announcements that I do want to make. One I'm very excited about, both of them actually. The first one is to let you know that St. Bartholomew's Church has been approved as a vaccination site. And so I'm very excited about, and in partnership with 40 West Assistance and Referral Center, Hunting Ridge Presbyterian Church, and a Maryland Association of Nurses, our task force team has just been profound. And so we will have an on-site visit soon and then be able to establish a date and some times. And we're hoping, a bunch hope, that we will be able to vaccinate 150 people here at St. Bartholomew's. The reason that this is important is because I hope that collectively our reputations in this neighborhood will help those who are hesitant to feel comfortable coming and receiving a vaccine, but also that we will be able to help those who have trouble getting to a vaccination site to find their way here. So I'm very excited about that. Please keep your eyes and ears open because we may need some volunteers. And then finally, I want to let you all know that we will start up our 8 a.m. service outside in the courtyard Memorial Day weekend. So we will be regathering outside for our 8 a.m. service. An exciting moment and an exciting time. And while we won't Zoom that, because we already ask a lot of our tech vergers, so those of you who are farther away will not be able to join us in that, we will always be Zooming this service for sure. But we will gather outside uh, with, bring your own chair, please bring a mask, but we will begin to be outside barring really, really yucky weather or maybe yucky cicadas. But anyway, we'll figure that out. But Memorial Day weekend, we will be back with our eight o'clock service outside in the courtyard. And so I think that's a wonderful moment for us and a sign of some grace and some renewal. Um, and so now I hope you have your bread and something to drink nearby as we move now into our time to have the joy of sharing a meal together. Thank you. And now God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks to the It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death. And by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. And gracious Father, in your infinite love you have made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, 
to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive these ho this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. And now, let us pray over whatever it is you have to eat and whatever it is you have to drink as we delight in this meal together. So, over whatever it is you have to eat together. Blessed are you, O Lord our God. You bring forth bread from the earth and make the risen Lord to be for us the bread of life. Grant that we who daily seek the bread which sustains our bodies may also hunger for the food of everlasting life. Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now over whatever it is you have to drink, let's pray together. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, creator of the fruit of the vine. Grant that we who share this drink which gladdens our hearts may share forever the new life of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now I invite you to go to gallery mode so that we can share and see one another as we break bread together and remember that these are the gifts of God for the people of God.
thanksgiving. In union, O Lord, with your faithful people at every altar of your church where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. I remember your death, Lord Christ. I proclaim your resurrection. I await your coming in glory. And since I cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me in this life and the life to come. Amen. And now may Christ, who out of defeat brings new hope and new alternatives, bring you new life. Amen. May you be a new creation, Christ for those to whom Christ will send you. Amen. May Christ, who by death has destroyed death, give you all courage and joy in believing. Amen. And the blessing of God, our creator, redeemer, and sustainer, be with you this day and forever. Amen. As we go forth into the world refreshed and renewed, we reaffirm our commitment to our vision and mission as a congregation. We will, with God's help, be a vibrant faith community that is a blazing beacon of God's transforming love in the world. God is calling us to take righteous risks. We accept this call and will respond by seeking and serving Christ in all people. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah.